Hi, my name is Doug, and I'm going to show you guys how to pull a pig out of Deep Canyon. I have a system that I use that I kind of invented to disassemble a pig. I use snares and bags. This is a domestic pig, but I was up there hunting about a week ago and I shot a wild pig and it ran down here. So it's a, the, basically the same scenario I had um, a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to walk you through it so it can answer maybe some questions for you. This is a snare that I, I make and I designed it to work with pigs and a bunch of different animals. There's multiple uses with this snare to the hunter. I'll, I'll demonstrate how I use it right now just to haul a pig over to a safe zone to uh, pick it apart to haul it up the mountain. So I'm gonna pull the pig over here to a safer area out of the public eye. So you open up the mouth on the pig, you go behind the teeth right here and you pull it up and you pinch it down. That pig is not gonna fall off at all. Okay, so as soon as you get out of the, the heavy brush, it really works well to have it this way in case you need to kneel down and pull the pig through and creep through some brush. Using it around the wrist uh, and pulling under the brush and through rocks, it works really well. Okay, now I have a long ways to go and I need to look forward for safety to make sure I don't fall. So what I'm gonna do, I grab my gambrel and I'll click it on to my carabiner right here and I, I'm gonna go around and turn around and grab it and pull my pig. Okay, so I pulled the pig to this location. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why. Number one, it's kind of out of the public eye. I'm gonna do something that maybe some people don't like, pulling guts, meat, stuff like that. Um, I have good branches to hold my animal up so I can uh, clean it properly. I got a creek over here so if I need to wash any tools, if I have any uh, gut or any back bacteria on my, on my uh, uh, blades, I can rinse them off and keep a good clean environment. Another thing I want to do when I pick it, make sure I can make it safe. Uh, these little branches here can poke you in the eye when you're working. So I'm going to clean all these branches out. So I won't be poked by when I work. I'm gonna take this tree here to uh, hang my my pig on. And this is a heavy pig. So for me to lift 100 pounds up with my body and hook around, it's almost impossible. So what I'm gonna do, I have a gradual pull here that I'm gonna put my snare on and I'm gonna scoot it up. And then when I'm at a good point, I can let go and everything's gonna hold good. I'm going to show you a little system that I use to pull the rope up, pull the pig up. We know it's a one-man job, you're the only one hunting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the pig, I'm going to put him in this snare here, then I'm going to put a counterbalance on it. I'm going to lift the pig up, the rope's going to slide with me. When I get to a good point, all I do is step on the rope and it'll hold there, then I'll tie it off. Okay, so I'm going to put a little tension on it to make sure I hold my snare. I'm going to get my other snare that I'm counterbalance. It's right here. I've selected a rock off the bank. You could use tree limbs, anything that will grab. So I put my counterbalance here. This pig's about 100 pounds and it's really hard to deal with and trying to hang it and everything. So what we're gonna do, I got a snare, I got a counterbalance. It's in the pig's mouth. I'm gonna lift up, the rock drops. When the rock comes down to a position where I have my hand on the pig, I grab my loop like this, and then I can hold the pig. Then I'll tie it off to the tree and proceed with my cleaning.
So what I'm doing, I'm wrapping the rope down the tree to give it the friction so the pig doesn't drop. I don't want to get it too high because the reason I'm hanging it by the nose up is because of brucellosis. Brucellosis in pigs is on the reproduction organs and it will give you um, like a weak flu if you breathe it. So that's why I hang the pigs by the head up. The pig's only going to get lighter from now on. But just for safety reasons, and I want the pig falling on me, I'm going to get some of this rope and I'm going to tie it off on the tree. And what this is going to do, just a safety, make sure it doesn't fall on me. So go, what's going to go on now is I'm going to get everything ready to go. Um, I use bags. I have a four bag system that I'm going to use for this pig about this size. If I have bigger animals, moose and elk, I go with bigger bags, all proportional to the animal. So first thing I want to do is go ahead and make it to a he she. And what I mean by that, I'm going to take off the scrotum all the way down to the nut sack. When you first squish the nut sack, you're going to have piss coming out. So beware. And make sure you get that out. So you, you're going to cut down on the pig. Down. Don't get too wide. Stay where the tubes are. So I'm, I'm in the crotch. Since this is a domestic pig, the ball's been cut off. I'm going to cut it off. I bring it down. Okay, and then I'm going to get to the ears. Come into the ears, I just cut on the base of the skull around the ears. Okay, the reason why I want the ears off, my next cut is going to be right here around the pig. And I'm going to pull the hide off this way. When I do that, I don't want the ears being dirty getting on the meat. Okay, so I'm going to cut on the top. I cut around. So the benefit of having it on these snares is I can sit there and turn the pig around and work on it. My, I, my, my cut I just did was around the neck. At this point, this knife should not touch any more hair. Hair is the hardest thing on knives. So I took my first cut, I took the cut around the neck from the ear around. Now my next cut I'm going to take is from the belly up and then to the arms. Still, I'm not touching hair. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I need to come down and cut into the chest. So I go to the bone of the arm, the leg, and I go right here. This is a skinning knife. This is a caping knife. The knives have two different purposes. What I do is I like to sharpen my blades, because when I sharpen my blades, I'm looking around to make sure no bears or coyotes or something's coming in on me. Or maybe a possible hunter thinking there's a pig over here. To shoot at. Okay, so when I start the skinning process, I grab right here and I come down. Then I pull a little flap, and what I do is I work around. Right in this area, there's a gland right here. And you just want to look at it to make sure it's not over inflamed or has pus in it. This gland looks healthy. You're going to have a gland here, 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 and here that you can check. And when I do skin, where I want to be is just right under the skin. In wild pigs, there's a thing called armor plating, and it's to protect their vitals. And it's usually right in here. Well, I'm going to show you this pig has a little armor plating on it. And what it is, it's thick skin. 
So what I'm doing is I'm going to cut down the back. And see that? See how thick that, that's plating. When you're pulling the hide down, never put your hand on this area. This is the area we're going to eat. If I take this dirty hand and put it up here, it's going to contaminate it. So now I always come under the hide, my hand under, and my knife is cutting down. I don't want to cut like this because if you look at the surface, it's smooth. That's what you want. If you cut it in like this, you get a thing called cupping. And cupping will hold moisture, and moisture will get bacteria and start the rotting process. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to take the feed off. When I put this meat in a bag, I don't want the feed in there because the feed's been on the dirty ground and the, the fur is going to be dirty. So what I do is I shake it and I put my thumb and I find where the joint is. When you know you have the meniscus correct, what you'll have is a meniscus oil. I always put my knife away because my next move what I'm going to do, I'm going to crack it. And what I'm doing is cracking tendons that I can't get with my knife. And then in here is your ACL. And there's the ACL. Okay, this is your ACL in the back. And what I'm going to do, I cut it. So then I have another leg. So I come up to it, I shake it, meniscus, I cut, kind of around the back. I'm in the meniscus, I can see it right here. I put my knife away. Then I crack it. Get my knife back out, cut the ACL, foot's off. Okay, now I skin the pig. Now I'm down to the, the rectum. We have a tail. The rectum is right behind the tail. So what I do is I cut the tail, which it be with my skinning knife and I'll punch it and break it or I use my caping knife and cut it. So you want to get back of the tail and when you're in there all you got to do is put your finger in and that's the pooper. So I kind of move it around to get the poop out of it. Then I get a zip tie and I'm going to pull it snug. Okay and then I leave this on there. Then I'll I continue my skinning. As you can see, there's some poop, but guess what? It's not on my meat. So now we have the meat exposed. We could, we're gonna use the meat bags to pack it out. But for right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the hide out. The hide itself is a, the cleanest surface I have right here. So I'm gonna lay the hide right there. So when I start taking my pig apart, I'm going to lay it on the hide. Okay, with pigs, you know, like I said, you want to look at the glands. Here's the glands. They all check out really good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the glands off. They are not the best tasting. I'm going to be putting all the leftovers on my cape right now as far as the glands. Because after I do my pig, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to leave all my guts here. I want to take them away from the creek bed and put them up high. As you see, I have not removed the guts yet, which is fine. As soon as I remove the guts, like in elk hunting, it's a dinner bell for the grizzlies. Around here, it's a dinner bell for the meat bees and the flies. So I'm gonna do the guts at the last segment of this. But right now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start cutting it up for the pack out. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start from the top down. I am going to cut, cut a shoulder off. It's a shoulder blade here. The shoulder blade comes up this high. You can see it right here. So I'm going to come in here, 
cut around like this. I'm going to start peeling it down. When I come in here, There's my shoulder, my front leg. And I always just kind of give a, 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 a light cut so I can see where I'm cutting. If you need to see where you're cutting, shake the shoulder and you can kind of see to make sure you're cutting correctly. If I come in here and just very simple. I'm gonna set it right here on my next bag. So I'm in my hams. Now these are my round roast. And I definitely want to get these out. And these are my hams and these are my hawks. So I'm going to come in and take my round roast out. It's only held on by tendons in the ball joint here, in the pelvic area. So I come in, I'm going to cut up to my spine to here. So all I do, that's the only thing holding on this leg is that ball joint. So I come around, I'm gonna cut the ball joint, now it's pulled off. I'm gonna continue down the, pel the, the pelvic bone. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then here's my ball joint again. So if you can't find the ball joint, just shake it around and you can get, find it and cut it. Go around it and continue. These are the back straps right here on the pig. We're going to start our cut right here and bring it down to the rounds. Okay, so I'm going to cut right in here to the spine. And anytime you do these cuts, remember, let gravity work with you. So I'm going to come down the spine. And the spine is just right there on the other side of my knife. I've done my cut down the spine. I've done my cut up the ribs. Now, remember, anytime you do this, you want the weight of the meat to pull down. So you want to follow the curvature of everything. And this is just one way of doing your back straps. There's a lot of different ways. This is hanging. It makes it a little harder hanging, but it still works well. Okay, there's my back strap. I'm gonna set it with my front leg. And the reason why, we all know the rear hams are larger than the front hams. So we're gonna put a little extra weight on the front hams. So I'm gonna continue to take my other one off. Okay, so right now, that's a, I'm going to say that's about 70% of the meat off this pig. We have our carnitas, which is our neck muscle. And then we have our most important meat is the inner loins, which is the porterhouse small meat on a steak. And that still has to be taken out. I, I have not dumped the guts out, if you've noticed, because the gut's going to bring a lot of flies. And elk it's going to be the grizzly bears so we're going to keep the insides the guts in until i'm ready to almost go so what i'm going to do now is just kind of do some pickup i want to get the top meat my wife really likes it for uh, tacos and stuff so i'm going to get this meat here and just kind of dress off the meat that i miss it has a some brisket bone here so I'll get that the brisket's really good and then this is your bacon which is a smaller pig 
So you can see by poking the knife, there's really no meat here. So I'm gonna work on the neck right now. So I'm gonna go down the spine. So I took this and still I think I'm light on my front shoulder meat. So I'll put that with that. I'll go ahead and do the other side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to raise it back up and I'm going to go inside and get the, the tenderloins inside. Because I'm going to come in and dump, dump the, the guts out to get to the loins which are in there. I'm going to lightly pierce it. And just be careful. When you see this, this is perfect. I put my finger in there and I'm in where the guts are. What I want to do is I want to put my fingers in there and I want to make sure I don't cut the guts because the guts have poop. All I do is cut down. There's the poop pile. Now I always want to do that low because if I do it up here it's going to fall on me. And I, I put my, my finger on my knife. Gut hooks can work really well too. I kind of do it this way. Next thing I want to do, I put my hand on top of the liver. Now the KP knife really works good for getting inside and cutting off those things. So what we have now is this is the diaphragm right in here. This is the diaphragm. We have our lungs and heart up here. Now I put my hand on top. This is your liver. This is your lower intestines. This teardrop is a gallbladder. If you run an arrow through that, you're going to have a lot of bile in your cavity here. And on the back, Right on the back wall next to my tenderloins are my kidneys. So don't mistake in your kidneys for your tenderloins. So what I'm doing, I'm pulling my kidneys off. Now remember, we cut the, the pooper. So what I'm going to do, it's ready to come out. I go in here and I trim around my pooper. I come in here and I cut in such a way around the pooper I let it drop so guess what the whole pooper is intact it's zip tied there's absolutely no poop or any bacteria inside my pig. Then I reach up I get the gallbladder I mean the, the pee bag and actually it's emptied. So right there, these are my two back straps. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take them out. And I do it kind of the same way as I do the, the uh, back straps, the back loins. Then I'm going to put them with my back straps. So pretty much, I just have a carcass. One thing I'd like to do, I like heart. I'm gonna get the heart out of here. So the way to do that is come in right next to the trachea. Put, cut the top of the trachea, then come down again. And now the trachea pipe's totally free. Now I cut around it. So it's totally loose. I'm gonna reach inside and grab the bottom of the trachea. And if I did everything right, Everything should just pull right out. Put my hand up there. And I pull everything out. We could check the health of the pig through the heart. That, that fluid there lets the heart beat in the bag without friction. Now I look at the heart to make sure the pig's a healthy pig. 
we got good fat on the heart right here coming down the vein or the collar or the crown has good fat so it's good it's good to go one thing you want to do with the liver is make sure you cut the gallbladder out okay so I want to cut the gallbladder this remember this is my gallbladder so I'm gonna lay it down and I'm gonna cut under my gallbladder and be generous if you lose a little liver it's okay you don't want to get that gallbladder I'm gonna take my liver and I'm gonna put it in the bag so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the head off and I just shake the head and I'm gonna cut same thing the tendons right under the head okay so what I do is I kind of shake the head and I find the connections so we'll put that aside and sometimes it's just a matter of twisting it and the heads off what I need to do now I'm gonna take the snare out because the snare is actually gonna help me out on getting everything loaded so I lift the snare out. I'm gonna set the meat over here. Since I got all my meat here, I'm gonna make my scene safe still. So I'm gonna take all my guts, I'm gonna haul them up the canyon a little bit and get them away from me. Cause if a bear comes, they're gonna go after this. Is I'm gonna fold it up. I place my snare on it then I'm gonna carry it out of here I want to make sure I get away from the creek beds I want to place the guts in an open area out of the public eye I don't want to place it on a trail because if a bear is eating the guts and someone walks on to them on the gut pile they can get hurt it's an open area which if someone does venture up, they're going to see the, the bear. There you go. Sometimes in real bear, heavy bear country, you want to flag it. So I'm going to go back and get the carcass. So I'm going to get my snare. I'm going to put it around the hip bones. I pull it tight. Carcass, the, the cavity can get really heavy. So I always just drag it. So. As I'm walking up to where I dumped the guts, I'm looking at that flag and looking below the flag to make sure there's no bears or wolves or coyotes on that. And it looks good, so I'm going to continue in. So what I'm doing now, I'm getting ready to haul out. And what the canvas, these bags are doing, is letting the meat breathe. The meat still has moisture in it, still is trying to cool off. If you put it in a plastic bag, put anything that it can't off gas, it's going to look like bread sitting in the sun in that plastic where it kind of starts to self rot. When you get a pack, you make sure you make it work for you. But with this mouthpiece, I put in the mouth, I put a cut right underneath the chin. I put a rope, my rope through. Now you can use a snare and tie it onto the upper bucket if you want. And then I just tie the mouth down. So I, I grab my snare and I go to my bags. Now these bags I sew up are designed to hold the pressure of these snares. And they're designed to breathe to keep the meat fresh. So you want to make sure that they bite and I got a good bite so what I'm gonna do now I'm putting my pack on and you can see how I have a lot of weight in the back so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna counterbalance it with my legs now if you do need more bags you can clip them on but just keep it balanced
Okay, you can see we're out of the canyon now and we got out safely. And this is kind of what the system's designed to do is uh, let you work with safety in mind. I'm balanced, I'm not top heavy. My truck is just right there, so I'm home free right now. Just remember when we leave the forest, waterways, trails, that take a little self pride in cleaning your site because maybe a family or fisherman will walk onto it. And you don't want them to look at hunters as bad people leaving a mess out there. So clean up the site and so we look good. You guys take care.